thank you for this introduction, Martin. Um, I will start screen sharing now. Please let me know if this works for you. Yes, this works. Okay. So I'm having the talk on the potential of FMI for the development of digital twins for large modular multi-domain systems. And I will be starting off with a brief introduction into digital twins in the first case, before I go into our specifics. Um, there are several types or levels of digital twins with the easiest one being simply a model where we have a real system such as the wind turbine shown on the right, which is our um, research and experimental turbine. And we have a model of the system. And there is no direct representation of this screen um, sharing stopped. Could you check on the screen sharing because we do not see your slides right now. Yes, now no. we can see it. Okay, that's interesting. I don't get any feedback about this, <laughs> sorry. Please let me know if it drops again. Um, it, so it we, have a, we have a turbine and we have a model of the turbine, but there is no direct interaction between these two. Once we have a more sophisticated process where we have a following of the model with the real system, we can name this a digital shadow, but this is still based on a model. When we want a digital twin, the main aspect is that we need a bidirectional communication between the physical system and the, the virtual system. And we can use this for all kinds of um, optimizations or improvements to the real system, such as a numerical optimization of parameters. We can use it to observe system behavior and identify faults or predict even faults. Um, the thing is, at the heart of all of this, we still have a model of the system. And the problem in wind energy is that we have quite complex systems that are highly modular. So usually when we have a model, we model an entire system. And in wind energy, we have a model, for example, for the wind field, for the, the air elastics of the turbine itself. We might have a different model for the electrical system. And then we have all of this connected to a model of the grid, to a controller. And these are individual models, usually built in individual modeling tools. And they can even be exchanged. So a single wind turbine might be coupled into a wind field with several more wind turbines. And after a couple of years of operation, the system might change because the wind turbine is taken down or a new one is erected. And then we need to adapt our model accordingly. So it needs to be highly flexible and adaptable to the system that changes the entire time. And what we did now is in a proof of concept, we have built such a modular multi-domain system for our experimental wind turbine which is composed of the turbine itself, the drivetrain, several aspects of the electrical system, and in the end, an electrolyzer for hydrogen generation. And the problem is that we need to combine these models efficiently. So it's not efficient to, to connect them uh, like on a one-by-one -one signal connection basis. Mm. At the same time, we have the problem that we have several different time steps and different simulation models. So we have time steps ranging from one hundredths of a second for air elastic simulations. That's usually just required for modeling the turbine dynamics uh, down to microsecond level for electrical grid aspects. If we have more sophisticated models on the wind level, it's even slower than that. It might go down to, to seconds or minutes. And here is where FMI comes in. So to solve all of these problems, we are building on, on FMUs. But we need to connect these models and we require multidimensional connections. Now bear in mind that we started this work before uh, version three of the FMI standard was really usable for us. So in version two, we only had Scala connectors and we needed to map these to one another. And we wanted to map these on a physical level. So think not of voltage and current, but think of socket and plug. And so what we wanted was standardized interfaces that we could already include in our modeling. From that, we derived a basic setup of a digital twin modeling tool where we have our individual modeling tools, such as the one shown down here, where we have a model of a specific sus subsystem. So for example, the aeroelastic part of our wind turbine, and we defined adapters. And these adapters are specific implementations that, um, that map the inputs and outputs of our system model to a predefined connector structure. 
And once we have all of these connector structures implemented in our, all of our modeling tools in our simulation models, we build a database of FMUs. So we, we, we built this database so that we could assemble a simulation model out of these FMUs freely using the connectors that are based on these adapters. However, we needed a way to, to do this efficiently. And so for that, we have built a model where we could connect these individual FMUs based on an ontology. And in this ontology, we not only define the adapters, but we also define how these simulation models are set up. And then our digital twin simulation or modeling tool derives the structure or the interconnections between individual FMUs automatically from the inputs from the ontology. And we then export an SSP, a system structure and parameterization. And we hand all of this, so the SSP with the FMUs over to an orchestrator and then we can do a simulation. And to get all of this to be an actual digital twin, we are still working to be honest on an, an interface that we could have data put into our FMU or digital simulation tools and that we can use all of this for uh, optimization so that we can improve our model. Now I will go into a little more detail about these ontologies because they are the core of our simulation setup. Mm. An ontology is a data format that makes data understandable for a machine and it's based on triplets. So uh, right here we have a wind turbine and the wind turbine is of type, or the wind turbine one, sorry, is of type wind turbine and the wind turbine is a subclass of component. And these are always triplets where we have a wind turbine one, for example, and the specific declaration, what it is and how it relates to a different um, component. We have defined components as partial models, such as the wind turbine, the controller. We have done this for all of the partial models that we have, not only for these two, but it would be too much to show. So there is about a dozen of these individual components. And then we have another base class that is the connector. And we have defined specific connectors that implement the base class connector. And we have implemented a compatibility so a connector B might be compatible with a connector A. And here you can see that the wind turbine has a type, so has, has a connector, sorry, connector B, and the controller has a connector A. And from that, we can deduce that we can connect the wind turbine connector B to the controller connector A. And all of this is based on specific use cases. So we have defined a simulation one use case and we have for this specific simulation one defined that we need a wind turbine one and a controller one, and then we can deduce how these need to be connected. The connectors are a little more involved because we need to go down to the actual signal level. And so we have a specific entity for this or a separate entity where we have the type of the connector and the signals that this implements. So this one, for example, means implements a pitch angle signal, which is named pitch angle out. Pitch angle, that's the angle of the, the rotor blades to the wind, to the inflow wind direction. And these again have a, a measurement entity. So we know that this is a pitch angle and a direction. And compatible connectors always have the same measurements, but opposing directions. So a compatible connector, like connector B from the prior um, ontology would be similar, except that these would be in and out. And then we know that these two are compatible and that they can be connected. And then we do our connections on the ontology level with the predefined connectors. And we implement these signals in our adapters into the individual models. And once all of this is set up, we basically assemble our entire system model on the ontology level, and we don't bother with the individual FMUs anymore. And then we have the automatic uh, digital twin simulation tool, which deduces the individual connections, assembles the entire model, and goes into a full simulation. So our process is then basically to wrap the existing simulation tools into FMUs, 
these FMUs need to adhere to the specific standards that we have defined. They are then assembled into the simulation model and we then go into our system simulation and our analysis. And I've been talking about the bidirectionality in the digital twin. Right now, what I've been showing, the simulation setup does not include any bidirectionality. It's basically an entire system model. What's most important here is that we can then use this model, for example, to simulate the entire system, to evaluate this for system stability, to do economic analysis, or even do numeric optimizations. There is a number of specific advantages that we identified and why we were using FMUs. So the first one is pretty obvious. We can use the engineering models that we are using already. So we've been working with Daimola, we've been um, modeling our wind turbines in Modelica, and we were working with Simulink for the electrical parts, and they can quite easily be implemented into an FMU. We also have some very specific models that, for example, model the wind flow inside of a wind farm. Our in-house tool is called Flappy, and there are libraries that we can use to wrap these into FMUs. So it's a very flexible um, platform that, that has proven very useful for us. Mm. Right now, a lot of the effort that we are, um, that, that we spend is on the ontology or developing this ontology, but we assume that this will decrease over time. So we have implemented a few interfaces or connectors and it's been quite a lot of effort, but once we have all of these in place and this becomes like the norm to use these, it will be very easy to implement new models to be compatible. Once we are at an SSP or at a FMU level, we have entire tool independency. So we can use any orchestrator. We are independent of the specific system that we are using. So we don't need licenses for the individual FMUs. We could even use supercomputers to run simulations in parallel. And we have an automatic link on these different timescales. So that's quite a problem for us because usually in a co-simulation, we would need to take care of this ourselves. But with FMU, basically the orchestrator does all of this for, you, for us. Mm. What we now work on or what we will be working on in the future is further development of the ontology. So it still needs a couple of refinements with regard to the individual implementations of connectors and of components. We have built a first rough proof of concept of such a model assembler, but this is something that definitely needs more work. We are build, implementing this in Python and um, we are collaborating with a couple other Fraunhofer institutes and universities on this. So that's definitely something that's on our list of to-do things for the near future. And we will be extending our model database. So right now we've been doing this on a problem-based level if we wanted to solve a problem or wanted to optimize a problem, we would implement our models as FMUs. And once we have a model database set up with more models, it will be easier to assemble entire um, system models. And then there is use cases. So this is basically setting up the simulation tool. The use cases that we are most interested in is the simulation of really large coupled offshore wind systems. Think not one turbine, but like a hundred turbines, or think not just a small site with three or four turbines, a couple hundred meters, but think of the entire North Sea. That's what we want to simulate. And that's why we need distribution capabilities for FMUs. And then we want to do analysis and optimization of these entire system models. And with that, I end my talk and I thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions.